as we go into the 21 days of hunger, um, and as I was just asking God this year, uh, just, God, what, you know, what is it that you really want to speak to our hearts about? And where are you taking us? The, the one word that just kept resounding within my heart and mind was the word deeper, uh, deeper. Uh, you heard David made, make a reference to it this morning, even in, in the message that I know we were all blessed by. And, um, and, and once again, you'll, you'll be getting uh, a daily email. If you're not on our email list, make sure you go to info at faithagcr.org and just put in there or go on to our website and put in there your contact so that we can get you on our email list so that you can get these daily emails, which we'll be talking about going deeper, especially deeper in our trust in the Lord for these next 21 days. Um, but God is calling us, I believe, to go deeper, deeper in our relationship with him, deeper in his word, deeper in the spirit, deeper, as we were talking about today, deeper in our faith in him and what that means. And as, as you'll be going through, uh, deeper in our love for one another, deeper in our commitment to the cause of Christ of getting the good news out to those around us, those who are happy to hear it, and sometimes those who frankly aren't, but getting the good news out to those that are still in desperate need of it. You know, sometimes people are like, no, I don't want to take the medicine. Okay, But that doesn't mean they don't need the medicine. That doesn't mean they don't need that. And that's our responsibility. We can't control people's response, but we can control whether or not we'll obey him in getting out the good news of Jesus. And so we're called to do that. We're, we're called to, be, to go deeper in our commitment to the cause of Christ Jesus. Deeper, I pray that we would go deeper even in the issues of our souls. Oftentimes the things that are hindering us from moving forward in Christ, that we wouldn't, we wouldn't uh, just maintain on the surface, but we'd say, God, would you help me to go deeper? with your spirit to address those things that often have been left unchecked and unaddressed in our lives. And there are so many in this room here who could talk about the way that God has helped them to go deeper in those issues, even through a ministry that we have here called Soul Care, as God has just used people and used times of prayer and times of waiting on God's spirit to just help them address those things, to go deeper in their lives in those areas that maybe they've never been able to address and go after before. God's calling us to go deeper into the uncharted waters that maybe we've never sailed out onto before, individually and yes, corporately as a church. But in order to go deeper, there are some things that we often have to let go of, some things that we have to address, some things that we have to be willing to do, to act on, and maybe even leave behind. In fact, in Luke's Gospel, chapter 5, um, Luke writes saying, on one occasion, while Jesus was standing by the Lake of Gennesaret, or the Sea of Galilee, um, with the crowd pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats at the edge of the lake. The fishermen had left them and were washing their nets. Just begin to picture this situation. Jesus got into the boat belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little from shore. And sitting down, he taught the people from the boat. When Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we have worked hard all night without catching anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to what? Tear. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them, and they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees. Go away from me, Lord, he said, for I am a sinful man. For he and his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were his partners, James and John, the sons of Zebedee. Do not be afraid, Jesus said to Simon. From now on, you will catch men. And when they had brought their boats ashore, they left everything and followed him. 
Let's pause. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for what you're doing. I pray, oh God, that you would enable me to speak forth not my words, but your word. And it would not be my words, but your word that, Lord God, would transform lives tonight that would have an impact for the rest of this year and beyond. I declare my dependence upon you, Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I want you to notice tonight, as we draw near to the brink of 2024, a few things from our passage tonight. Notice Simon Peter to go deeper and to experience all that Jesus had for him. Number one, Simon needed to allow Jesus into his boat. Simon needed to allow Jesus into his boat. Did you notice? Things didn't start by Jesus saying, uh, let's go deep sea fishing. It didn't start there. Instead, they started by Simon simply allowing Jesus into his boat. Honestly, the text doesn't really indicate that Simon Peter had much of a choice in this matter. I think for the most part, it was just that Jesus was going into the boat whether Simon wanted him or not. It doesn't really say that he asked his permission. It doesn't give any of those indications. It was just that Jesus stepped into his boat. And guess what, folks? That's often how Jesus operates. He just all of a sudden shows up when you and I aren't expecting. I was an 18-year-old at a youth convention. I hardly remembered what the preacher was preaching about, but all of a sudden, as I was sitting up there in that hockey coliseum called the War Memorial, all of a sudden, Jesus stepped into my boat. I wasn't expecting it. I didn't know it was going to happen that night, but before I knew it, all of a sudden, I knew that Jesus was calling me, and he was saying, come, come. You see, that's the way that Jesus often operates. He all of a sudden shows up, he steps in when you and I are like, I had no idea this was going to happen tonight. And I'm just trusting and believing that God's Spirit is going to do that in some of your lives here tonight, whether you're here in person or even joining us online. That Jesus is stepping into your boat. Listen, it doesn't say that, that Peter necessarily gave him permission, but, but once Jesus was in, we do know this. Simon Peter was not like, hey, Jesus, what are you doing in my boat? Get out of my boat. You know, I could just hear him, you know, one of the guys from the old, you know, sitcom, you know, you kids get out of here, you know. No, it wasn't like that at all. Jesus, you get out of, what are you doing here, man? You know, what are, what are you doing? You know, we just got out and we just, we're finally washing our nets. It's been a long night. Would you just, hey, 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 go find another boat to sit in. That's not what we see happening, is it? Unfortunately, that's where some of us are often at. That's where a lot of us, could I say, miss the boat. Jesus is stepping into our situation and he's saying, I want to I do something in your life. I want to change things up. I want to interrupt your program. And oftentimes we're like, whoa, 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 Jesus, whoa. Well, would you just do me a favor? Would you find somebody else's boat to uh, get into? I like the way that I have my life going right now. You know, he and I, or she and I, we have something good going. I don't want you, like, getting in the midst of our relationship and messing things up and, like, now telling me to do things your way instead of my way. Jesus, would you just find, like, another boat to go into? We get so full of ourselves and so full of what we want to do, what we've planned, that, you know, when Jesus steps into our boat and interrupts our program, you know, we actually get upset and we try to somehow push them out. And guess what? Somehow or another, the God of the universe who broke through the course of history and took up residence in this flesh, somehow or another, he allows us, he allows us to bump them out of the boat. He gives us that free will to choose that. To say, whoa, 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 didn't you see the off-limits sign? Oh, you can come, and, and you can come, and yeah, you can bring that in here, and yeah, we can do that here in my boat. Sure, but, but whoa, whoa, Jesus, not you. Because that, that's going to change things way too much. That's going to change things. You want to go deeper this year? I'm talking about allowing Jesus into your boat. Allowing Jesus into your life. I'm talking about surrendering your life to him. 
I'm talking about saying yes to him, regardless of the cost, regardless of the changes that it might mean. Going deeper this year for you and me in Jesus, I can tell you this, it's never going to happen if we leave Jesus outside the boat. It's not happening unless you and I open the door of our hearts. Jesus, he's the alpha and the omega. That means he's the beginning and the end. He's the only one who took our sins upon, a, uh, upon himself, as our brother, our brother shared about that testimony. Praise God. He's the only one who is able to take our sins upon himself. He's the only one who will rescue us from that penalty of our selfishness and sin. He's the only one who will take us one day from this earthly, temporary journey into our eternal home. And he's the only one that will be able to take us in 2024 deeper, deeper in God. He's the only one. Will you make room for him tonight? You don't have to wait till some Sunday in 2024 when the song is just what you wanted it to be and the preacher was just who you wanted it to be and the setting was just right. I pray that you'll take a hold of it tonight. You will say, Jesus, yes. Would you come into the boat of my life? Regardless of what that means and regardless where, of where it will take me. Secondly, for Simon Peter to go deeper and experience all that Jesus had for him, it meant Simon needed to obey Jesus in the small things. Somebody say small things. Small things. Listen, before Jesus ever asked Simon to go out into the deep, he first told him, do you read it there? Put out how much? How much? A little. A little from the shore. A little from land. Just a little. A lot of times, right, we're, we're, work, we're waiting and we're, we're, we're looking like, okay, God, I want to go all the way out there. And he's like, wait, I, I just said to you to do this. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. And everything in our text seems to indicate that that's precisely what Simon Peter was willing to do. And folks, that tells me that oftentimes, again, we, we might be waiting for the big break the, the big break, so to speak, the big breakthrough, the big opportunity from God to come. You know, we might be asking God to take us deeper, but meanwhile, we haven't even been willing to leave the little bit from the shore. Just a little bit. Now listen, I'm not an expert at deep sea fishing. In fact, any of the men, we had a ton of men that went on a deep sea fishing trip this past year. And if you're a man here who likes to go deep sea fishing and you weren't with them, well, get ready for the next one. But I can tell you this. I was not on that boat because I know my limitations. I'm the guy who's like popping Dramamine, wearing bracelets, doing all that stuff. I would get car sick just going to my grandmother's in Manhattan as a kid growing up. And I never knew what it was about being in the back of the station wagon. Why? I always felt so nauseous going to grandma's. It wasn't grandma. I would get car sick. I've been on the cruise once, once, only once, deathly ill, entire tables practically not showing up because of a storm out on the Atlantic. But for you, it'll be a beautiful experience. I'm sure it will be. I'm not an expert at deep sea fishing, I can tell you that, but this I do know. You can't go deep sea fishing staying on the shore. You know what they call that? They call that fishing not deep sea fishing. To go deep sea fishing, you need to go out there. You need to go out. For some of us, we're like, I want to go deep with you, Jesus. I'm just waiting for you to take me deeper, Lord. Take me deeper, deeper. Oh, that's not the song, but you know what I'm saying. But did you ever consider, as you and I are waiting for Jesus to take us deeper in him, He's actually waiting for you. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. He's waiting on you to get off the land, get into the boat, to say yes to following him, and push off the dock. Just to obey him in the small things. Small things, Pastor John? You know, like, um, well, if you're a student here, like, how about obeying your parents, 
Wait, no, no, I want Jesus to use me in El Salvador. I want to go to the ends of the earth and shine for Jesus. Okay, how about just starting by obeying your mom or your dad, or your parent or guardian? Whoa, but that's like, that's not fun. It's obeying him in the small things. You want to go deeper in Jesus in 2024? Start by obeying him in the small things. Start by not lying to your boss. Just start there. Start by obeying him, by getting into his word just a little bit every day. He says to call upon me, to pray to him a little bit, loving your neighbor as yourself, loving one another as he has loved you and me. It's about the small things that as we do those things, it begins to open the door more and more for the deeper things that he has for you and me. He's waiting for you maybe to use what you do have, the opportunities he has given you. And you're saying, well, I want that big thing. I want to be used by in this way. He's waiting for you to use what you do have, the opportunities he's already given you, even if it means just doing the small things. Listen, I don't know what opportunities you did not take a hold of in 2023. I'm sure we all have them, including myself. The things that you did not take a hold of, those opportunities that maybe passed you by in 2023, what small steps you weren't willing to take for one reason or another. But what do you say that you commit this year, even day by day? Can you say day by day with me? Day by day to doing the small things. That's why I love as we do the 21 days of hunger. It's just a way to start us off in just increments where you can just commit every day, just a little bit every day. You know what, I'm gonna set this aside today and I'm gonna take time to pray during this time of day. Just day by day, committing yourself to doing the small things. Let me put it this way, because it's the people who choose to consistently obey hear me, consistently obey in the small things who are not only best prepared for the big things, but who also make the greatest difference in this life. Finally, once again, we read, when Jesus had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we have worked hard all night without catching anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. Lastly, in order for Simon to go deeper and experience all that Jesus was about to do in his life, number three, Simon needed to let go of his frustrations and fears. He needed to let go of his frustrations and fears. Could you imagine being in Simon Peter's shoes? Thank you. It's good when the worship leader is your wife, you can drink right out of her bottle. You thought I brought it up here for you. Thank you, honey. Can you imagine for a moment being in Simon Peter's shoes there? You were up all night laboring and labor. This was not like sitting at some cushy job at a desk all night, you know, where you could just sort of doze off for a while and nobody cares, just wake up the next. No, you're toiling, you're laboring, you're working hard all night. It's a physical physical job and you're working hard and now you've finally finished they're finally like washing their nets from being out there all night and all the stuff that they probably caught were bringing up they're finally done with all that they're frustrated they're they're, they're just disappointed they're they're maybe dealing with anger and all sorts of things that now they have to deal with and all the the financial shortcomings because of that and and all the pressure now on them and, and all of these things and you've been out there and I don't know, I'm just feeling so many emotions in that moment as, as Jesus, this, this rabbi, who's not even a fisherman, has the audacity now to say to you, hey, why don't you go out there again and try it? Go out there and try it all over again. Are you kidding me? I'm feeling a bunch of emotions in that moment and they're not warm, fuzzy feelings. No way. Talk about frustrating. Talk about making me more angry in that moment. As if my night wasn't tough enough. I'm feeling a bit defensive right now. You ever been there? When somebody pretty much said like, why don't you do it again? As if what I just did wasn't good enough. 
as if I didn't work hard enough. Because that seems to be maybe the implied here. Like, is what I did, was it not good enough? Did I not, like, know what I was doing? Is that what you're implying here? Because I'm the experienced fisherman, and you're not. You know, like, what, what are you trying to say? Or that, that I really didn't know what I was doing? And truth be told, I don't actually, you know, um, if I'm in Peter's shoes, Simon Peter's shoes, I don't really even want to do what Jesus is telling me to do right now. Because if it doesn't work, I'm going to just look totally foolish. Because, you know, it's like sort of out there already amongst the other fishermen. Like, we came up with nothing. You know, so it's, it's going to look... And guess what? And if it does work, by some strange reason, if this does work, um, I'm still going to look really, really bad. Because maybe that actually shows, like, I didn't know what I was doing. And he did. Like, so there's a no-win situation here in a lot of ways going on in my mind. If I'm just playing over the scenario, if I'm just getting defensive and, and I'm going through all the things to sort of protect my, my reputation and, and just walk through all that frustration and disappointment. In fact, I love that Simon Peter is real in his response and, and Luke records those words for us. Master, we've worked hard the entire night. We've, we've caught nothing. All night we've been out here, we've caught nothing. Zilch, zero, nothing, nada, nothing to, nothing to account for. But it's the next line of his response that I don't want you to miss. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. In other words, it's as if Simon Peter is saying, Jesus, I think this is ridiculous. Truthfully, a waste of time. Remember, we don't know that Simon Peter at this point has seen much of all of Jesus' miracles and all the things that Jesus is yet to do. So this is just a fresh, you know, off the press, fresh out of the boat, so to speak, time here. We're looking back and we're thinking, of course Jesus could do this, but, but try to look at it through their lens, through their eyes. Who is this guy at this point? We're just getting a, a chance to know him. And I could just hear him, Jesus, I think this is ridiculous, truthfully a waste of time, and actually a bit offensive to me, maybe even a slap in my face, at least to my pride. However, Jesus, because you say so, because you say so, I'll let down my nets. Actually, literally, it says that however, the word of you. In other words, however, at your word. In other words, the word there is the word in Greek, rema. It's this rhema, it's this word, this word that Jesus has spoken in this moment. In fact, just in our passage this morning from Hebrews chapter 11, it talks about the universe was, was made at the word of God. It's the same word there in the Greek, rhema, even the same form of it. It's this word, because at your word, Jesus, because you say so, I'll do it. What was happening? What was happening here? Simon was willing to put, listen, Simon was willing to put his present obedience above his past experience. Some of us put our past experiences, our past frustrations and disappointments and letdowns with God and others, maybe even others in the church, we put our past experiences and all those things above our present obedience to the Word of God, to what Jesus is speaking to our hearts, to what His Holy Spirit is saying. And we're like, yeah, but you don't understand. This is what I've been through. This is what I've already gone through. This is how I was hurt. This is how I was disappointed. And I pray tonight that we would flip things and that we would be like Simon Peter in that moment. And we would put our present obedience to that word that Jesus is speaking, that he's made clear, we would put it above our past experiences, no matter how negative they've been, no matter how disappointing or frustrating they've been. Can you say amen? And that meant he needed to let go. He needed to lay down some things. He needed to let go of some attitudes, maybe the logic, the arguments, the frustrations, the fears that would keep him from obeying and going deep with Jesus. What about you? What are the things that God is calling you to let go of in order to go deeper in the Lord in 2024? Deeper in the Lord in 2024. Is it past disappointments? Is it past frustrations? Unanswered prayers. I love the scene 
from a movie called Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. Thank you back there for helping me because I'm not clicking anywhere. Where everything is collapsing around Dr. Jones and, um, and the others in this catastrophic moment. And in the midst of the earth literally shaking and the ground splitting apart, Dr. Jones attempts to rescue a woman by the name of Dr. Schneider, who also happens to be a villain who fell in love with Indiana Jones in the course of the movie. Right? So now, though, as she dangles above this chasm, Dr. Jones grabs one of her hands, just one of them. But Dr. Schneider insists that she must take hold of this long lost holy grail that they've been searching for, this, this cup of infinite value and power, which, which is only inches away from her other hand. But Dr. Jones realizes that he can't hold onto her one hand much longer, so he begs her to give him her other hand. But she refuses. She refuses, still trying to reach this, this holy grail, this precious cup. She refuses to let it go. And as a result, she suddenly slips from, her, from his grip. And she falls into this chasm to her death. But the scene isn't over. No, no, no. The scene is far from over. Because now, Dr. Jones himself, Indiana Jones, begins to fall down the side of this cliff, ready to plummet to his death. But he's suddenly grabbed by his father, Dr. Jones as well, who holds on to his son now for dear life, who, as his son is dangling over this same abyss. Now, you would have thought that Indiana Jones at this moment would have already learned his lesson from watching what happened to Dr. Schneider, this, this woman's death. But there, as he dangles, he too now sees the Holy Grail. He sees this cup that they've been searching for, that everybody's been fighting for. And as he sees it, he desperately tries to reach it. But his father can barely hold on to him and exclaims, Junior, give me your other hand. I can't hold on. But Indiana insists and he says to his father, I can get it. I can almost reach it, Dad. But then his father, with eyes of love and a tender voice, calls to his son. He doesn't call him by his nickname, Junior. Instead, he calls him by his first name. And he just says, Indiana? Indiana. Then as Indiana looks up at his father and their eyes meet, his father simply says these words to him. Let it go. Let it go. And Indiana Jones is faced with a choice in that moment. Does he let this thing go that he has sought after? Or does he... Does he does, does he keep going for it? Or does, does, does he, does he, what does he do? Does he keep trying to grab for it and hold on to it? Or will he let this thing go? And suddenly, Indiana Jones, Indiana Jones makes his choice as he swings his other hand around, as he lets that holy grail go, and he grabs a hold of his father's other hand, and his father pulls him up to safety. I'm going to ask you to stand across this room. What about you? What are the things tonight, as you're going into 2024, what are the things that you've been trying to hold on to that God is saying, let it go? Let it go. Allow them into your boat tonight, folks. Please. Obey him in the small things, day by day. And finally, I pray that tonight that you would let go of your frustrations. You would let go of your fears. Let go of those things that are often rooted in your past, maybe past disappointments and past failures. I'm going to ask you across this room right now for the next 30 seconds, would you begin to move forward here? Come on, even right now, we've got about 30 seconds before we hit midnight. Would you begin to make your way to the front? 
And I just pray that we would come right now and that we would commit ourselves to going deeper in the Lord in 2024. Approaching his throne of grace tonight. To saying, God, I'm, I'm all in. Some of you tonight saying, Jesus, would you come into my boat? I surrender my life to you. Lord, I commit myself day by day. Here we go. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Happy New Year. Hey, Faith Online, we want to thank you once again for joining us today. Now, if you made a decision to follow Jesus, please be sure to click the Next Steps link below. If you're having trouble getting to us in person because of life circumstances and would welcome a visit from our care team, please let us know by clicking the Connect link below. Finally, if God's been using this ministry as a blessing in your life, uh, we would love for you to do three things. Number one, subscribe to this channel. Number two, share this link with others. And finally, number three, support the work of this church by praying for us and giving financially as God would lead you. Well, until next time, remember, living for Jesus won't always be easy, but it will always be worth it.